Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Beyond the Cage podcast presented by Fight Chicks. I am your host, Jim Graham, and we have a special guest on the line. He will be fighting at UFC 185 on Saturday, March 14th against Benil Dariush. He is Mr. Darren Crookshank, the Detroit superstar. And Darren, thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, thanks for having me again. Uh, always, uh, I'm always, it's always a pleasure. Now, of course, uh, last time we talked, uh, you were going over the uh, eye injury that you uh, suffered uh, in the fight against KJ Noon. So obviously, uh, everything got cleared. But uh, you know, how how quickly did it take for everything to heal up on that uh, injured eye? Uh, well, I really only had to wait for basically the stitches to, to heal up because uh, you know they had to stitch up my tear duct, and you know I, they didn't want me having any contact for, you know, like 14 days. That way, uh, you know, I didn't reopen the stitches. Now uh, so now that the stitches have cleared everything, have you noticed uh, any different to, with now that tear duct being removed? Yeah, I mean, I, I wake up and I always have, like, a lot more, like, eye boogers, I guess you could call them. <laughs> um, but other than that, you know, sometimes it, it, uh, it tears up. And instead of the tears, uh, you know, going down to my nose, they just kind of run off my face. Okay. But so, as far as vision, as far as vision and everything, that's that's all 100% fine. So it's just just a little differences, but nothing that has uh, affected you significantly. No, no, not at all. All right. Now, of course, I know after talking with you after the noon fight, you were really kind of looking forward to maybe getting back in there again against KJ. But I guess KJ had uh, other plans, uh, talking about retiring, going back to college. Um, was it kind of disappointing to know that you weren't able, at least anytime soon, to get that fight against him again? Yeah, you know, I I, I don't like sitting on, uh, you know, some, uh, not a loss, but, you know, something that I knew I was going to win. And, uh, you know, put on a great performance. I'd like to have that fight again, but like I, like you said before, yeah, he's, I think he's taking a second guess at, uh, his career choices. He's, you know, he's been in the game for a long time. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's possible time for him to, to retire. So, you know, you can't, uh, can't be mad at the guy, but, you know, and, you know, so I don't, know. it's, it is what it is. So after, you know, you kind of found out that that wasn't going to happen, uh, you saw an opportunity to, once again, quick turnaround, as you like to do uh, so very often, and you're able to get yourself a fight uh, in Dallas for UFC uh, 185. Um, have you ever been to Texas before? I've never been to Texas. I am excited to go, you know, because I hear everything is uh, bigger than Texas. So, you know, after when I get to uh, go smash some some food. I can't wait. I hear about all these like awesome steaks and and stuff like that in Texas. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Now, of course, as some of our listeners know, you do a lot of uh, shooting at the gun range uh, here in Michigan and obviously Texas. I think everyone has a gun uh, down in Texas. So are you gonna be, uh, do we see any guns or anything while you're down there? Yeah, you know, I you know, I think. Um, I'll probably go see, you know, where where uh, the president was assassinated. I know they, I think that's down there, so I'll go check that out. And then, you know, if they, if there's some gun ranges or, or you know, some fan wants to take me out shooting, I'll definitely go shoot. Now, sticking out with guns for just a second, I remember asking you, it was right before uh, Christmas when we last talked, and you talked about going to the Novi Expo Center to the Gun and Knife Show and saying you're probably going to get your Christmas gift there. Uh, what what'd you end up getting from that show? Oh, I don't remember. I have been looking for, because uh, I want to do a uh, three-gun match, but kind of like a cowboy instead of having, like, modern rifles and stuff. I want to do one this summer. Uh, with a, you know, like a lever action 12 gauge, maybe a lever action 30 30, and some kind of revolver. So I have been looking around for, for something like that just to uh, get on the range for something different. All right, now, of course, uh, before you go to Dallas, the Arnold Classic is once again uh, this weekend in Columbus, Ohio. Are you going to once again uh, drive down to Columbus to attend? Yeah, I will actually be working the Reverie booth. They are a company that makes uh, tripper-beat beds and uh, sleeping systems. They basically, uh, you know, their big target 
is uh, CrossFit. They sponsor the CrossFit Games every year, and they're looking at, you know, their their the people that they sell most of their bets to are athletes, you know, because a lot of athletes don't, you know, they worry about their diet, they worry about their exercise, you know, things like that. But they leave out a big part of your training and your, you know, well-being, your health is getting the right sleep. And, you know, these beds, I've had one for three years, and it's awesome. Uh, it, it's actually kind of a fight to get out of the bed in the morning because it's, just, it's so comfortable. Now, uh, speaking of sponsorships, uh, I got this uh, forwarded to me from one of our uh, listeners, DK. He forwarded this to me and saying how you were clamoring to get a sponsorship from the uh, mobile app, Class of Clans. And I was wondering, has that been able to develop for you? Oh, wait, no, it hasn't. I'm pretty sure they followed me on Twitter, and I have uh, sent them direct, me- direct messages. But, uh, no, I-, I haven't gotten any sponsorship from Class of Clans. I'm pretty sure they're probably just like, uh, yeah, he's already addicted. We don't need to give him anything because <laughs> they make a lot of money now. Now, for those of uh, you who don't know, obviously Darren plays the mobile app Clash of Clans. And from what I've heard and for, from uh, your post and other uh, people that play the game or, or know about it, uh, isn't just something that you like to do. You're actually, I guess, one of the best uh, in, the, in, the, in the game. You're one of like the top ten players uh, with your clan. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, top five in my clan, but not in the world. Like, there's okay. a bunch of Asian kids out there that beat my butt every single time I battle them. <laughs> They're probably, like, 10 years old. Oh, man, those are probably the uh, the Korean kids that don't leave the uh, the game parlors exactly. there in South Korea. Yeah, exactly. So. I guess if you gave up fighting and did Clash of Clans full-time, maybe you'd get a sponsorship, right? I mean, if they paid me to do it, I would for sure, uh, you know, think about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, looking ahead here, again, UFC 185, um, you're going to fight Benil Dariush. Uh, what intrigued you about him to uh, to book a fight here for UFC 185? Well, it wasn't really, uh, you know, it didn't matter who I was fighting. It, you know, they, uh, they gave me some dates. The possible cards they they could put me on, and Texas was you know one of the better ones. It didn't you know I didn't really look at you know who they wanted to match me up with. You know they they were thinking about putting me on that Brazil card that just happened. There's another one coming up in Europe or something. And I just bought out of the country, uh, not my last fight, but for that. So they they were okay with me you know waiting for uh, a fight in the U.S. So. You know, they gave me his name. I said, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't really matter if they put in front of me. So you're telling me you didn't want to fight on the Poland card? You know what? It, I mean, at the point in my career right now, I try to stay in the States and fight because, uh, you know, I'm not making a, a crap ton. You know, I'm not one of the top guys that are making a hundred grand, a couple hundred grand, or, more. you know, over 50 grand a fight. Because when I go and fight out of the country, I get hit with a lot of taxes. I get hit with taxes in that country. I get hit with taxes in the U.S. I also have to pay out of pocket for uh, all my corpsmen and all this stuff. So it's not, I mean, I try to, to fight in the States because, I, you know, it's just, at the point right now, it's, it's not worth, you know, unless I have to, unless I say, hey, you got to go. It's your turn. Then, then I try to stay in the States as much as possible. All right, I was just bring it up. You know, that that would have been pretty cool though uh, to fight in pull. You know, if if the expenses would have lined up, I think that would have been a, a cool card for you to be on. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, I definitely like to fight in Poland uh, eventually, but uh, you know, see the world, uh, beat people up. You know, that's the uh, thing. <laughs> All right, well, uh, looking at the fight there, obviously uh, Dariush is uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is what he's known for. Um, he's developed a pretty solid uh, stand-up game. I think his last couple of fights has showed that. But um, is he a guy you kind of got to look out for in uh, several different areas? Uh, you know, I would say uh, you could call him like a a power chop. <laughs> he's, he's, good on, he's good on top. He, he's good at taking the back. He's good uh, as far as grappling wise. You know, that's, that's, I don't think he's anything super special off his back. You know, like if I take him down, it's not kind of like I'm going to run into something that I haven't seen before. And on his feet, he's a southpaw. Everybody, if you look at my career, I knock southpaws out. 
a lot. So uh, I know how to fight a softball, and a lot of people don't know how. So, you know, if his downfall would be thinking that he can stand and strike the beat. Jim Graham talking with the Detroit superstar Darren Crookshank. You can follow him on Twitter at Crookshank155. And uh, I know we're about uh, a week before weigh-ins, but how's the weight uh, looking for 185? Uh, I woke up today, 75 and a half. It's starting to come off. I'll get there next week, uh, under 75. Uh, if, I, if I get there on Monday, under 75, then I'm happy. You know, the weight, the weight will come off. It's uh, I got it down to uh, pretty much a science. You know, I mean, no matter what, cutting weight sucks. No. Uh, you know, we'll see. I get on a scale, probably 156 exactly, but naked, because <laughs> uh, I don't try to, I try not to lose more than I have to. Now, of course, your last fight against KJ Nunes, that was on the main card. Uh, this one will be on the undercard. Uh, were you kind of hoping for a main card spot, or does that not really body, bother you for this one? It, it doesn't matter uh, to me, you know, if they headline me or not. You know, eventually that would be sweet. I'd like to see him come back to Detroit, and uh, and I, you know, be a possible headliner or you know, co-main event or something. I just got to go knock people out and uh, put on a show, and it'll come. Now I know uh, they were supposed to have a fight uh, this weekend in Windsor uh, when they originally announced the schedule back in November. Some things didn't materialize and, and whatnot, and obviously, uh, you know, with the proximity to you know where you live and train, that would have been the one to get on. And uh, did that when you kind of heard that one kind of go away? Did that kind of maybe disappoint you a little bit? Uh, not have a close fight like that? Well, I I was actually pretty excited. I was going. I was probably going to be on it most likely, me and probably Randy Marcos too at the same time because. Uh, we train on the same camp, and it's just down the street. So, uh, but when they canceled it, or not canceled it, it just didn't go through. I think they were having trouble with the uh, Windsor Commission and not being, uh, you know, not it's just not a smooth transition there. So they, I think they canceled it. Um, I think that they would sell out. I mean, UFC, I believe, sells out everywhere they go. But I think it could be worth it for them. But um, as far as you know. The commission, you know, that's uh, that's a big part. Uh, was I disappointed? I mean, it'd be sweet to, you know, fight close to home. I think there's one coming up in Chicago after my fight, you know, a couple months later. So I'll try to get on that one. That way, you know, it's nice to have a sports system. Chicago's only a four-hour drive away. Probably like 50 people will drive there. I mean, last time I, in my, my biggest fight, I had like, Another 50 people fly there. I mean, Vegas. Everyone wants to go to Vegas, and uh, it's just a lot more fun than just having a UFC fight. Now, have you heard anything about them trying to get an event either back in Windsor or, like you said, uh, hopefully uh, uh, back in back in Detroit? I haven't uh, heard anything. I know that the UFC had their lawyers out here. Uh, in Lansing talking to the commission about eight months ago. I haven't heard anything what happened from that, if they were actually going to plan something or if they were just working on, you know, the the laws and rules of Michigan. So, uh, you know, we'll see. Now, I wanted to, uh, speaking of our great state of Michigan here, I wanted to bring something up that uh, you yourself posted on your Facebook page, and this was following, I believe, a local event in, I want to, I believe it was Southgate, the WXC. They had an event uh, a couple weeks ago that uh, you were uh, cornering some of your guys there at Michigan Top Team, and you kind of made a, a comment about the, the judging and the way the commission here in the state of Michigan uh, is being run is not up to the level of some of the other states uh, here in this country, and do you think uh, before the UFC or you know Bellator did come here, but um, you know Bellator or other major organizations really start coming to Michigan more? Do you think things in our commission here for the Michigan Unarmed Athletic Combat Commission that have to change to get bigger time MMA uh, organizations to come in more frequently? You know, for the most part, uh, as far as Michigan judges uh, is concerned, uh, there's only really two that suck. Um, and I don't think they. I don't think it's not. I don't think it's that they're not good and they don't know what they're watching. Because I'm pretty sure they've been in martial arts or been around it, stuff like that. I 100% believe that they're corrupt and they have low, uh, low, uh, low, like, like a, 
just I think that they just have something against me or my team and the success that we've had. Um, because, you know, I've watched some of the fights uh, that they've judged, and they did a great job. And then other ones, it's almost like they pick and choose. Okay, well, personally, I don't like this fighter, so I'm going to screw them on the card. Um, and, you know, the, that's not, uh, I mean, you, well, the fight that I was talking about, was uh, you know one of my one of my guys fighting a uh, guy from like uh, Ohio kind of and I would say 100 percent it was a five round fight I would give four rounds to my guy and one round to him being that they were pretty equal on the feet my guy got I want to say nine takedowns at least two takedowns each round and. Nobody was committed, but there was damage done on the ground, you know, from my guy being on top. And, you know, everybody in the crowd, even the commission, is like, what? How did this happen? Like, two of the judges. One of the judge uh, trains at a, at a local gym, actually a competitive gym, the closest gym to my gym. Um, and he's just a low-life scumbag. And, you know, with low, low, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know, like, I don't know, it's, it's pretty, uh, it makes me mad, you know, so I, it's, it's, uh, but, you know, karma, karma, uh, comes and goes, and he'll get his, and, and the other judge, you know, it might not be physical or mental, but, you know, down the road, karma will come get, come back and get you. So, obviously, if the UFC comes back, uh, they best be sure to not use those two gentlemen. My gym, we basically boycott it. If they are at a show or at an event, none of my fighters will be fighting on it. Uh, I won't be there. Uh, you know, they have, basically the, 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 uh, the promotion gets to kind of choose and pick who they have judging. So, you know, I hope people know that if you want, if you want me at your show, even just spectating, you know, it's good for, for the show, and, you know, I'm, I'm basically uh, the only UFC fighter in Michigan that's here 100% of the time. So, you know, I try to get to the local shows a lot and, and uh, show my face. So, I mean, if you want me there, don't have those guys there because uh, I won't be there. And my fighters won't be fighting on your card. Now, of course, this past weekend, UFC 184, Ronda Rousey against Kat Zingano. Uh Boy, you know, 14 seconds, uh, you know, I'm sure you saw the highlights of the fight, but is it just incredible just watching her fight? Yeah, that's crazy. You know, like, me watching that, that wasn't like some mistake, arm bar, like she just fell into it. She she landed in that position. And she knew what she was going for. It was that's still. I mean, I've seen a lot of like crazy stuff where like, wow, uh, that that was uh, big, you know, definitely you know, block or or uh, or just a crazy scramble. But she, yeah, it was a crazy scramble. She got cat like hit. She like landed on top after almost getting tossed, and then uh, dropped back for that arm bar. And it, it was amazing. Now, of course, uh, the main event of UFC 185 will be for the UFC lightweight title as Anthony Pettis takes on Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in that one? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a tough one to, to judge or referee or, or even uh, say, you know, who's, who's money on. Anthony Pettis has, has been on a streak, and you know, he's not only known for striking, but he's been some of guys, too. It's crazy. He's been off the bat. So, you know, it's... Uh, I'm excited to watch it and, and, you know, be there potentially, but uh, hopefully they're not getting the bonus and I got my man out and now I get the bonus over. <laughs> All right, he is Darren Crookshank. Again, he will be taking on Daniil Dariush at UFC 185 on the undercard. You can follow him on Twitter at Crookshank155. And uh, if you if you dare, send him a challenge on Clash of Clans as well. Yeah, uh, Jersey Star on Clash of Clans. All right, Darren, thanks again uh, for coming on the show and wish you uh, the best of luck on Saturday, March 14th. Thank you. All right, he is the Detroit superstar, Darren Crookshank, right here on Beyond the Cage, presented by Fight Chicks.